Welcome back to Worth Effort Woodwork Ants. Today I'm going to be offering up you a budget-friendly gift guide for the woodworker in your life. And I'll probably try and give you a few details on each item so that you can at least pretend that you did a little research for them. And these are going to be stuff that won't break the bank, but just about any woodworker in any area of the craft would appreciate. Or even if they have multiples of them, it will add to their uh, enjoyment out in the shop. So, come along, and let's look at about a dozen different gifts. Now, down below in the descriptions, I will put links to these. These are not affiliate links. I am not getting paid if you follow along. You can go to your any other place to do that kind of stuff. These are just kind of shortcuts to help you find the stuff I'm actually talking about. And the first thing I want to talk about is a Mora knife, a Sloyd knife. A Sloyd knife is a very traditional carving tool. And it might look like just your average kitchen knife, but there's quite a bit of difference in design in these. Especially this one I'm showing you now here. It's made by the Mora Knife Company. These are actually laminated blades. And let me see if I can show you. If you zoom in fairly close on them, if you look right about there, well, let me get a brand new one. They come in this kind of plastic case in this price range. Look on the blade right there. You see the color change right there? This is a lamination of multiple different kinds of steel. You have a very hard steel on the edge so it will retain its edge fairly well. A little bit softer, more flexible steel on the outside so it won't break as easy. And it's easier to sharpen. And that's one of the things, besides the shape of this blade that makes it so nice is you sharpen it completely flat from here to here. Now that is tr quite a bit different from every other knife which has a bevel that starts here and ramps down. It's a lot easier to sharpen these because you are not removing as much steel. You want to keep this entire edge flat because it allows a woodworker to uh, lay it down and smooth stuff out. This is a lot harder to control in carving aspect. That's why these are so highly prized and most of the time when you get these people are spending a hundred, two hundred dollars getting a blacksmith to make them. This particular company just comes out with a great value. This is one of the few things in the entire craft where I think the mass-produced ones that are fairly inexpensive, we're talking between 20 and 25 bucks for this model, uh, rivals the best out there really good option. I use this in wood turning, furniture making, all kinds of stuff. And it is nice to have two of them. I have what I call my beater, which I do use for just about everything in the craft. And then when I want to make nice finishing cuts, I have this pristine one that has the edge that is absolutely perfect. that will make those final cuts. So if the woodworker in your life already has one, having a backup is a real nicety and they will get use out of it. Next up is a good spear point marking knife. Now, I'll give you a few options here. Marking knives are like pencils. You're always misplacing them, so it's nice to have a few around. I particularly like the spear point design marking knives. And why they are called spear point is obviously they come down, they look like a spear, but they have the bevels on only one side. The other side is completely flat. That allows you to put it up against a board and mark right next to it. And having a spear point means you can use, do that to both sides of a board. Whereas if you only had one bevel where it was just shooting straight over and you just had it like a regular knife, you would pretty much have to get two of these. This is just really, really nice. Now, this one right here is one from Lee Valley, and I'll put a link down to though. It's a little bit thin, but it's incredibly useful for tight stuff. Me, personally, I like a little bit thicker blade because I'm just kind of a klutz. And this one right here, they have several different companies that make very similar ones. This one, too, is from Lee Valley, and I'll put a link to their version down there. But... It, and this, the bigger ones are about $40, which is on the high end of our price guide today. This right here is another option where you can support a small uh, tool manufacturer, Hawk Tools. He makes striking knives of his own, and you can give your woodworker just a blade, and they can make the handle, which is kind of cool. And these are high, uh, high carbon tool steel, so it's really easy to sharpen, holds its edge a good long time. And I believe they're about 30 bucks. Since we're talking about marking, let's talk about a marking gauge. These kind of tools are 
just kind of a revolution in the modern woodworking era. They did not have these in the old days, this style. And I just think the quality of them is so much better than what they were working with 50, 100 years ago. Now this right here is from Lee Valley. It's a, a it's their top of line model in this style. And I'll show you what makes it the top of line. But you can get one just like this without the micro adjuster for about 10 bucks less for about $40. And then they have a smaller version for about $30. And once again, these are lifetime investments. The key things you want to look for is one where the little cutter head recesses into the head. That way they can store it like this and also it's not going to be left out so that they're not going to cut themselves. This particular model has a locking wheel right there that will lock that there. Then it has a collet where you can lock it down here. And then you can loosen this one up and the head is actually on threads so that they can get it close and then twist it to go up and down the threads as a micro adjuster. And that's what the extra $10 you're paying for when you're getting this model is getting that micro adjuster. But once again, this is a lifetime tool and having multiples of these is a true luxury, especially if you're doing a big project because you can leave it set for one part for the entire project so you can go back to it or if you're doing multiple legs or something like that. So even if they already have one, having a second is a real nicety. Next is a small rubber and nylon mallet. Now this is the traditional size one you can buy at the big, most big box stores. Some of them will have this smaller version. Uh, I'm not sure how heavy it is but it's just kind of tiny. You can judge it by you know it's the length of my index finger. This right here has become one of my main adjusting tools on all my hand tools, all my power tools. It's just a little tap 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 right there. It doesn't mar your work. It doesn't dent things. It's just incredibly useful. And I want to say I paid about $8 for this. I'm not sure what store I got it from, but you can probably find it just about everywhere. Just look for a small rubber nylon mallet and your woodworker will really appreciate it. You can see how much I use this thing. Next, I want to talk to you about the Shinto Rasp. Uh, this is an incredibly useful tool and a lot of traditional woodworkers will kind of frown on it because it looks so basic, but because of the cool design, which I'll talk to you in a second, it can do so much things. And these normally sell for 40 bucks, but I can tell you just about every holiday season they go on sale for $20. And I just looked on Amazon, I'll put a link down below, they're selling for 20 bucks. And the design, you can just look at it and see it's like little hacksaw blades that are kind of bent and welded together. Now the cool thing about that is, is if you understand hacksaw blades, the blades are cut straight across. And because they now bend, you now have some blades are angled this way, some blades are angled that way. So as you move this thing over your work, you get a shearing cut in both directions and it can be both really aggressive on the aggressive side or really smooth on this side, depending upon the speed, pressure, and angle you approach with it. So when somebody asks you, why is this so cool? You can say, well, look at the blade angles. They fight each other, so you can get the smoothest cut on even the gnarliest of grain. Now, every woodworker has to sharpen their tools, and these are some of the most commonly used tool sharpening aids I use. A simple card scraper like this. It is diamonds, very fine. I use the fine one the most. Uh, and it's nice because if, you, if you're at the workbench and you just want to kind of rehone a chisel, you can kind of come over here, do this with a chisel, then stroke it on a piece of leather and get back to work really, really quick. And it just fits in your pocket. And I just checked on Amazon and you can get four different grits or three different grits right of this diamond stone for 20 bucks. A awesome um, stocking stuffer. On the lathe, I am constantly using this. This is a 1200 grit one, and I want to say you can pick these up for about $35. I've had this one for a good dozen years. I'm using this to hone all my other gouges. This was my main sharpening tool for chisels, planes, and stuff like that for years. Now I just kind of use it in my hand because it's nice and heavy and kind of maintains stability. I will also tell you this one's going to be a bit pricier. I think it's about 80 bucks. It's from Allen Lacer. It is a diamond slipstone. 
and they'll fit inside gouges. But diamond sharpening, hand sharpening accessories like this right here, $20 up to about $80. And every woodworker will use these almost every day. Um, just incredibly convenient. Next up, let's talk about miniature planes. Veritas has a whole set of miniature tools, and these are just a few I've gotten over the years. And as strange as it sounds, I've actually used these quite a bit. These work really great in marquetry and stuff like that. This one right here, if you ever do quarter inch uh, grooves like on the bottom of a drawer, this can clean up little high spots or remove just a tad bit uh, if it's going to show, that kind of groove is going to show. Plus the very nice sides and squares will let you square up a bottom if you're doing a inlay. Granted, most of these are just going to be kind of paperweights for the office, which is kind of cool. I will say this, they did come out with a little card scraper, which is a miniature version of this tool right here, which I could see being incredibly useful if you're doing marquetry or you need to get rid of just a little bit of tear out in a small section because it's about that small. Uh, the one miniature tool plane I use the most though is this chamfer plane and I've talked about it before. But basically it's got a slight recess on the blade, right, like that. And how you use it is if you have a piece of wood right there, a lot of us will put a bevel on it or we take sandpaper around it, but this tool will give you a consistent result every single time to just kind of break those edges. And these tend to hover in the $30 to $50 range. Now, if your woodworker is really into antique hand tools and is just getting a collection of them going on, here's a wonderful gift. Get them a replacement blade from a company like Hawk Tools. There are a couple companies out there. I just always recommend Hawk because it's a nice guy and he makes really high quality blades. But the advantage is, ooh, this one's kind of gummed up, uh, is the modern day steels are just a little bit nicer. Plus they have better steel going all the way up the blade. In the old days, they only had it down here. And the blades are a lot thicker. So they control chatter better. It doesn't get as, vibrate as much in the cut. And it's something that a lot of woodworkers won't think about getting when they're restoring a hand plane. A blade like these, or pro a replacement blade, is probably going to be about $40 to $50, uh, along with a chip breaker you might get too. So look into a replacement blade. Just go out, go to find his tool, and it's probably going to be labeled somehow. This is a number 14 stamped right on the side. It might be a number 3 or a number 4, but it'll be labeled. And then go to Hawk Tools or Pinnacle or anybody like that to get a replacement blade. And if they are into hand planes, this little doodad right here. It's actually a screwdriver that makes getting the uh, nuts off the blade just a lot easier. I get more people asking me what this is than any other tool I use. It's really in demand. And I want to say they're less than 20 bucks, but I'm not sure about that one. I'll have a link down below. And a great stocking stuffer, just get them a box of Ticonderoga pencils. You know the really thick, fat ones with the big lids that you used in kindergarten? These are great around the shop, and every woodworker needs more pencils. And the last two are going to be a little bit more on the pricey side, but there's a variable here. Books. Books, books, books. Forget YouTube. Forget the magazines. Books is where your education is at. And I'm a big fan of Lost Art Press. And in their book catalog, I would highly recommend the Anarchist Design Book. That's the one of Chris Schwartz's that I'm getting the most out of. Because it's a little bit of his philosophy, hobnobby, yada, yada, yada stuff. But he also gives you good examples of plants. And these plants are formatted so that there's a variable. So you can customize them yourself. He gives you the resources to add that customization. And the next one is one that I think every woodworker ha should have. It's the Essential Woodworker. And his books on his uh, store, they, you know, $20 up to 60 and up. But I think these are in that mid-range price. And this would be a nice luxury gift to give somebody that won't break the budget. The last one, you're going to have to do a little bit of sleuthing. Go out to his shop and look at his drills and stuff like that. And if they're all from the same make, Chances are he's doing them because he needs to use the same batteries. A lot of times we will buy a tool and we will have to share batteries between those tools. Or if one goes dead, you have to kind of wait around. 
So go pick up one of his batteries and go buy him a couple replacement batteries. Uh, these can be pricey, but cordless is the way everyone's going and batteries are where it's at. We always need more batteries. So there you go. A dozen mostly budget-friendly gifts that any woodworker would appreciate because they're ones that they will actually use when they're out in the shop pretty much in any niche of the craft they do. Now, if you do want to support the channel and they are a fan of mine, consider these two. Uh, I have my French Square. Uh, a lot of people are telling me I have them priced way too low, but they're a good value out there and they're something that I use all the time. They probably will too. And I did do a production run of these English Squares earlier in the year. I have about 10 left. I will not be making them again. They did not sell as well as I thought. Uh, and I have way too much labor in them for what I was selling them for. And these last 10, I'm going to discount to almost half off. So if you want to get, get them a nice English square, this is a layout tool used to mark, mark out 90 degrees. Or if you're doing a glue up, you can clamp things to it so that, that as the glue dries, it will stay at 90 degrees. Fun little tool. I use them all the time. They just weren't as good a seller as I thought they'd be. So we have them on, on the site at a discount. Well, there you go. I hope you got a little bit out of this video so that you can offer up a gift to the woodworker or you have some ideas that, of things you can ask for from your family and friends. You can just shoot them to this video if you want. And at the end, I want you to remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create stuff, and share it with others. So the best gift might be something that you make for them. Y'all be safe, have a fun, and appreciate no matter what you are given.